Hello and welcome to another Digital Photo Mentor video. Today I'm going to give you a walkthrough of the new Luminar 3 with libraries. It's very exciting. Let's check it out. So here we are inside the much anticipated Luminar 3 with the new libraries module. So that's what they are calling their image browser where you see all these thumbnails. Um, in Lightroom it would just be your library. So they're similar terminology, which is great. This is where you get to actually see your images. So this has been a long awaited update for Luminar and I'm really excited. I've taken a quick run through it and tested a few things and added a few folders. And I have to say I was really impressed with the speed. I would like to add a slight caveat uh, that I am running a Mac. Um, I have a MacBook Pro that is about four years old, so it's not super brand new and, and you know, maxed out. It's maxed out for the time, but it's not anything compared to new ones. So I haven't compared it to Windows, and I don't know how it operates on Windows. Um, I have heard that it runs a bit slower and there are some issues, but it's also still in the beta phase. So it is currently in pre-release, and you'll be able to get it as of December 18th. So that's a few days from now. Um, so let me just run through the pricing with you first. Right now, I do believe that it's still on sale for $49 or $59, pardon me. And if you use my discount code, which I'll put below the video, Digital Photo Mentor, you can get another $10 off. So that's $49. I do believe there's also an upgrade price. I'm not 100% sure what that is, but I believe the code applies on that as well. So if you grab it now before the 18th and you know that you're going to want to upgrade um, or purchase it, you'll get that price after the 18th, the price will go back to, to the regular price. Um, my discount code will still apply. So having said all of that stuff, let's dig in and see what it looks like. So I made a few notes. I can actually see my notes for myself. Um, so I remember what I want to tell you. So the first thing is that um, the library module works real time, meaning that um, these folders here are actual folders on my hard drive and I can click on any one of them. For example, these are my pictures in Nicaragua um, from different years, right? It's just clicking through each of the folders and these are actual folder names um, matching my hard drive. Okay, so if I right click on it and say tell, show it in Finder, so that's the actual folder where my files live, okay? And you can see that this one actually lives on an external hard drive. Okay, so let me close that. Um, I've also imported my pictures folder, which actually live on my hard drive of my laptop. Usually I save all of my images on external drive, so most of them are there. But some of them I do save um, in my pictures folder if there's something like I'm doing uh, an article like this for you guys, or something where I need some small images, or if I'm traveling and I just want to take them with me. Okay? So I do have a few on my pictures folder on my hard drive. And another really cool feature um, is that you can actually add Google Drive and Dropbox folders. So this folder here is um, all of our photos that we're using on our website for our various tours and things to promote our tours. And if I look at where that one is located, it is actually on my Google Drive. Um, that is a really, really cool feature. So I can actually put images on my Google Drive and work on them while I'm away from home without bringing my external hard drive. So that is actually a really cool feature. I really, really like that. Um, it also does allow me to sort them and tag them and do all the normal things that I could with them um, on my hard drive. So first thing I want to do is I want to show you how fast it works, at least for me on a Mac. Okay, so I'm going to add another folder. I've added a couple of folders already um, with a lot of images. I'll just zoom in so you can see here. So my Cuba folder, if you can see this one, uh, I initially loaded and it has 8,797 images. And I did that when I first opened the program and it took maybe a minute to load those. Then I loaded my Nicaragua folder and it has close to 19,000 images in that folder and I timed it and it was just under two minutes. So I would actually challenge you to do that with Lightroom or any other program to read that many images that quickly. Okay? So let's just see, I'm going to pick a folder and I'm going to add another one. I'll pick one from my external drive and often when you're working from external drives, 
things go slower. But that hasn't been my experience so far. Um, so let's just add my India folder. So these are the these are my images from India that I just took. So we just got back from India. Um, let's just see how many are in there so you have an idea. I think it's around 4,000. Yeah, 4,084. Okay, so I'm going to add this folder and I'm going to leave it run real time so that you can actually see how long it takes to, to load these. Okay, so my clock says 531. It's loading, it's thinking about it. And you can sort of see the progress up here. It shows you how many photos are in that folder. So it's already like a third of the way there in less than a minute. My clock hasn't ticked over to 532 yet, and there's a little percentage here, so it's telling me 69% red, okay? 100% that took about a minute. Quite impressive. Okay, so you could see that it's got 4,169 images in the folder, and the subfolders that you saw when I was doing the import are also there as well. So I can see my raw files, I can see ones that I've already exported because I've processed a few in Lightroom. And I can see some pictures that I got from uh, some other people. So these were ones that I processed because I was doing some star trails in the desert at night. Right. So pretty quickly it loaded my images and um, I can see them on the library. When you're in the library, now you can change the size of the thumbnails to from small using the plus minus to the biggest, or you can choose from this menu here. Okay. Uh, what else can you do? You can look at recently added. Okay. So I added some photos today at 530. Okay. So I added 4,169, which was the folder you just saw me add. Um, I added four earlier. I added a bunch yesterday. That was the ones that I was testing. So it shows you what you've added. It also shows what you've worked on. Okay, so I played around with a black and white today. Um, yesterday I did a couple of edits on these ones. So it shows you what you've recently been working on, which is actually really, really cool as well. So if you ever kind of forget where you left off, you can just go back and go, oh yeah, what was I working on? There we go. Okay. Uh, what else can we do? Okay, so Luminar works with a catalog similar to Lightroom, but it stores it um, in what they call state files. It does not use XMP files. So if you're familiar with working with Photoshop or any other programs that save like a sidecar along with your raw images, it does not work with those. Um, and I'm not sure about the compatibility in terms of will it um, work with those files. Okay, so it currently does not work with XMP files. Another cool feature is plugins. Okay, so if you have any plugins on your computer already, you can just go under Edit, Plugins, and Other, and look at that. So I already have a bunch of plugins that have been saved on my computer from a long time. Um, some different versions of different ones, some old Topaz ones, I've got Photo Lemur, and so on. Um, plus, it recognized Aurora. All of those show up automatically for me. So how cool is that? So if you're working with any of these extra external plugins, Nick or Topaz or Alien Skin, any of those will show up here automatically for you. You don't have to do anything. That's a nice feature. Um, you can still, of course, edit your photos in Luminar. So if we select an image, let's say I want to process this one of the Lotus Tempo in Delhi. Okay. Something has changed um, inside of Luminar. You can now have what's called a look, okay? So instead of presets is what they used to call them, right, now they're called looks, okay? So inside of there, you can just choose your preset that you, you want. Oops. You can see um, I've got the little thumbnail panel on the side here, so I can scroll up and down with my mouse, or I can go left and right, which I did accidentally, okay, by using my mouse quickly. Okay, so I'm using a lot of keyboard shortcuts actually to get back to uh, the grid view or the thumbnail view. Um, so G, just like if you're using Lightroom, gets you back to the grid view. Um, and I just hit enter to, um, or double click to get into full screen view. Okay, so once you're inside edit, um, you can use Luminar just as you would normally. So if I want to do a quick process on this image, I'm just going to pull down the highlights, 
give it a bit of contrast, give it a little bit of clarity. And it seems like it's a little bit yellow to me. I'm going to give it a little bit more blue. Okay, so let's say I'm happy with that and I want to go back to the library. Okay, so I can go back to the grid view and I can right click it. Sorry, I'm still learning where everything is here. Uh, go edit uh, and I can copy and it will let me paste the settings onto the next one. Okay, um, alternatively, I can actually sync them as well. So if I select two or more images, I can select sync, where is it? Doo -doo. Still figuring out where everything is because it's brand new. Sync, where's my sync? <laughs> there we go. Adjustments, sync adjustments. So I can copy adjustments, paste adjustments, or sync adjustments. Okay, so if I sync it, you can see that that one has changed as well. The only disadvantage of the sync feature right now is that it syncs everything. So if you've done anything like cloning or some local adjustments on one image in a certain area, it will apply all of those things to the other one. So you'd kind of have to go to that one and then undo those things. Um, so the best way what I would the best way that I recommend um, using the sync feature is just do your basic edits. Uh, like go into the edit, use the raw develop, and do like your basic adjustments like I did, color, black, white, contrast, saturation, that type of thing, and apply those to a set of images that are similar or shot in the same place. And then do each one individually when you pick which ones you want to process a little bit farther. Okay, that's how I'd recommend using sync for now. Okay, flagging and tagging is something else you can do inside of, of Luminar. So if I decide I really like this image, for example, I can add a rating to it by clicking the stars down below, or I can just add a number. So if I click the number three, it does three stars. If I click four, I think you can see that it changes to four stars. Okay? If I hit P, it adds a little heart, which means I like that picture. It's a favorite or picked. Okay, same thing. And I can also add a color label and there's numbers assigned to those as well, just like in Lightroom. So it's very similar if you're coming from Lightroom. So red, yellow, green, blue, and purple. Um, with the purple exception, you have to add that one manually. Okay, so let's just say I want to add a purple one there. And I'm just going to do some random sort of ratings just so that we can um, sort them out later. So I'll just pick a few images. Uh, let's say I like this little tuck tuck guy here. And I like this one of the food. I'm going to pick that as a favorite. Oh, I like the girl's feet. Okay, so I've got a few images that I like. Uh, now I only want to see the ones that I've picked, okay, or the ones that I've rated. And there's a couple of ways to show your favorites, okay? So automatically they've created sort of what's like a smart collection in Lightroom. Um, your favorites up here on the side panel, just click that and it's gonna show me everything that's rated as favorites. Now you notice that there's a few other images in here. These are Cuba. So this is everything that's rated as a favorite, not just inside that folder that I was just in, okay? So if I wanna only see the favorites from my India folder, then I wanna go up here and I do show favorites and it will only filter out the favorites in that folder, okay? I can also sort by the ones that I've rated three stars or more or the ones that I've added a color rating to. Oh, I didn't do, let's do, I did purple, okay? So currently you can't sort by more than one thing unless you go here to favorites and then say, I want to see which ones are three and more. That's the only way that you can filter by two criteria currently, but I do believe that their new smart search is coming in a future um, update. So that is something that's being worked on as well. So to come. Okay, that's sorting, tagging, and flagging. Okay, you can also sort your images by capture time, edit time, uh, the rating, so the one to five stars, whether it's a pick or not, the color label, file name, type, and size, and then how you decide you want it to go up or down, ascending or descending. Okay, again, pretty common things. If you've used Lightroom or Photoshop or another program, it probably is going to be very familiar for you, okay? 
The neat thing that I want to mention again is that your folders and your images are real time. This is exactly that Luminar is seeing what is on my hard drive. So if I click through here and we looked at where it was on my hard drive, for example, okay, I'm not going to do Q1. I want to do one that I'm going to edit, for example. Uh, let's say, okay, here's some articles that I did on my website. Okay, so these are some images that I did for an article. Okay, so I want to say, show me that folder. Okay, so here's the folder. Okay, now watch what happens. I'm actually going to rename this folder. Um, let's call it for travel photo tips or photography tips. Okay, so the, the name of the folder was five travel tips. I'm adding a word and I'm doing this on the hard drive, but watch what happens over here in Luminar as soon as I hit enter. Okay, it's going to update for me. Okay, so now when I go back to Luminar, it's representing the file name. So I don't have to refresh. There's no lost images. I don't have any weird exclamation points next to my images. It knows where they are and it knows that the file name changed because it's looking at the actual folders. Okay. So if that's something that has frustrated you with Lightroom in the past, you don't have to worry about it using Luminar Libraries. Another feature uh, I want to highlight is albums, and I haven't made any of this yet, so let's do that. Um, this would be similar to collections in Lightroom again. Um, I'm mentioning Lightroom a, a lot because uh, I know a lot of people are looking for something to change to. They're looking for an alternative, okay? So I'm just going to call it um, best people photos. Okay, so I've created an album called Best People Photos, and what you can do is you can literally just drag your favorites into there. Um, so let's say I like this fellow, I'm going to make the thumbnails a little bigger so you can see them. Let's say I like this fellow, the doorman in India, I'm just going to drag that in there. Now you can see there's two photos in there. Okay, I like the girl on the bike, where did she go? A little too big on the thumbnails. <laughs> Okay, so this is people, feed people. Okay, I can just drag that in there. Okay, so now I see those three photos in that collection. Um, they call it an album. So I can have those photos in as many um, albums as I want. I could have India favorites. I could have um, a folder for sending to friends. I could have a folder for sharing on Facebook, anything that you want. Um, so it's like a virtual uh, folder where you can just save similar items that you want to use for a certain purpose. Okay. So that's a handy feature. So a couple of things, let me just check my notes here. A couple of things that aren't in it yet, and that is metadata editing, meaning you can see the information on an image. For example, this is the one with the girl's feet. I can see that I shot it with the X-T3, so I can see sort of the main EXIF data, which is, you know, the camera, the file type, what white balance I use, and the exposure settings, uh, but I can't edit any of it. So I can't add my copyright information or keywords, that kind of thing. That is coming, and that is something that is listed on the roadmap. I'll give you a link to that if you look down below the video of future releases and when they expect to have those features rolled out. They're basically saying within the next six months or so, they should have a bunch of new features, and that is one of them. Okay. Okay, the next thing that you can't do yet is create what's called a virtual copy. So in Lightroom, you can actually make another thumbnail without duplicating your original file and do some work on it. And you can't do that right now. So for example, if I wanted a color and a black and white image of this uh, version of this one, so I'm just going to pick a preset. Um, let's say I want a color version and um, a separate black and white. What I would have to do is I would just create a layer and do black and white on one layer and color on the other layer. Okay, so there's my, my color image. But rather than putting it on here, I'm going to reset actually. So I'm just going to reset that. So I'm going to add it as a layer and do it as black and white. Let's just make it punchy. I'm just going to add a filter. Okay, so I'm just going to add some contrast and some clarity. 
Maybe I'm gonna use our AI filter. Okay, so that's on one layer. And then let's say I want to do black and white. I'll do that on another layer. Okay, and then it allows me to sort of easily turn that off and on. Okay, so that's kind of the workaround. Um, another way is you could actually duplicate your image and have two images, but um, I wouldn't recommend that. I would just go the layer route and then export each one separately. Okay, and that allows you to quickly see two different looks. I'll be doing more tutorial um, things on Luminar, so I'm going through this fairly quickly just to give you an overview of what kinds of things that you can do, what are what is built into it already, and what is coming. Okay. Um, I already mentioned the smart search, so if I just go back to the library, there's no way right now to search that's coming. You'll be able to search by things like EXIF data, so um, a particular lens. Uh, maybe you want to know all the shots that you took with f2.8, for example, um, or that kind of thing. Okay? Or search by keywords, which is actually a lot more common. So if you go through and meticulously add keywords to your images, which I'm actually really bad at doing, so if somebody wants to come do that for me, that would be great. Um, if you want to add keywords, so for example, on these ones here of, of the uh, tomatoes and the beans, you might add food, beans, color. You might add this one as people, feet, street scenes, that type of thing, okay? So it helps you find your images later, like if you have images of flowers or animals or anything that you kind of um, photograph a lot repeatedly in different different genres of photography that is coming under their new smart search. Okay? That's another feature. Something else that they've promised, and this is a biggie, again, if you're using Lightroom currently, they've promised a Lightroom Migration Assistant. So if you're one of those people that wants to get out of the subscription model, or if you have an older version of Lightroom and you don't want to pay the subscription, there will be help coming. Again, I don't know anything about it or how well it works. Um, all I know is that it's something that they have promised in a future update. Okay. A couple of things that I haven't seen on the roadmap yet and that I would like to have as a feature request myself is uh, being able to rename the files. Currently you can't do that. Uh, you can rename the folder like so for example the one that I renamed on hard drive I can actually just remove it and rename the folder here inside of Luminar. Okay? But I can't rename an individual image. Right? If I right click on it, it doesn't give me that option. I would have to go to my finder window, rename it there, and then it would represent that. So renaming a whole folder of images or automating that isn't really something that's in there yet, but I'm hoping that comes in a future iteration. Okay? Um, I will be putting it in as a feature request, not to worry. The other thing that I would like to see um, that isn't in there right now is if I close all my folders here I'll see if I can zoom in a little bit so you can see this a little better okay, so you can see that my folders don't really tell you where they live right like if I look at Cuba Cuba and India and Nicaragua I know are on my external drive but it doesn't tell you that so I'd like the way to be able to see sort of the parent folder and the hierarchy of structure because I know that those three are on my external drive Pictures is on my hard drive and tours and workshops and website content is actually on my Google Drive. So I would love to know um, what folders those are in based on um, the parent structure and be able to see that in Luminar. So I'll be putting that in as a feature request as well. Okay. Something you do want to be really careful of. <coughs> Something you do want to be really, really careful of, for example, um, this one here has no images in it, um, or so it says, it says there's no images in here, but I can see five of them. If you tell it to delete a folder, okay, notice how it says delete forever, okay? I saw a warning once and then it went away. So once you accept the fact that if you click that, it's not just deleting the folder out of Lightroom, it will actually delete it off your hard drive. So um, be very, very careful of doing that. Uh, yeah, so here's one, see that there, it says that there's no files in it, but there's actually some files in there. They're just not readable by Luminar. So be very careful about deleting anything. Um, I would be really, really conscious of not doing that until you know for sure that you want to delete the whole thing. 
So that's about all I wanted to show you for now inside of the new Luminar libraries. Um, I'll get some more tutorials once it's released and I have some more time to play with it a little bit and figure out some of its nuances and idiosyncrasies. But so far what I've seen, um, I think they're on the right track and it looks really, really good. Uh, the, the biggest thing is that the folders and the image names update real time so it's less confusing than the Lightroom catalog and for me it loaded really really quickly and like I said I have a four-year-old laptop um, it has 16 gigs of RAM if you have a brand new computer with a faster processor chances are it's gonna load pretty quick for you as well so that's it. I'll put some more information down below and if you're interested in checking it out, do grab it before it goes um, after pre-sale. So once they launch it on the 18th, I do believe the price goes up. So grab it now and take advantage of the pre-release um, pricing and check it out once it's available next week. If you have any questions uh, and you have purchased it, do post them below and I'll see what I can do about getting them answered for you. If I don't know, I'll try and find out. Take care and until next time, keep photographing.